this video, we're finally going to solve trig equations. Now, we can solve trig equations like sine x equals one half by graphing both sides and then using technology to help us. So for example, the graph below shows us y equals sine x and y equals one half. And we can see on here that there are multiple solutions to this equation wherever those two graphs cross. So that would be in multiple places as we continue to have the function repeat. Uh, just as an example, two of those places are pi over 6 comma 0.5 and at 5 pi over 6 comma 0.5. That's actually at, you know, the special angle values pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6, right? And then those would repeat every pi units because the period of sine is pi, right? Now we could write all the solutions by taking one solution that we see and adding two pi to that solution because the period of sine is two pi. So for example, we could take that first solution at pi over six comma 0.5 and say we should have another solution at pi over six plus two pi, but then plus four pi plus six pi plus uh, eight pi. And so essentially plus two pi n, where n is an integer. And we'll have another set of solutions at x equals five pi over six plus two pi n, where n is an integer. So those are all the solutions. But most of the time, we're really only interested in the one solution that falls in the first quadrant, because the first quadrant is between zero and 90 degrees. And we do a lot of work in mathematics on right triangles and all of the angles in a right triangle other than the right angle are between 0 and 90 degrees. Now we can also solve these equations using inverse trig functions. So if we look at an equation like sine x equals 1 half, we could solve this by taking an inverse sine on the left side and an inverse sine on the right side. So I'm going to write inverse sine, left parentheses, and then leave a space, right parentheses, on both sides of this. And then I'm just going to drop in the equation. So inverse sine of sine x equals inverse sine of 1 half. Now, because we have a real inverse function now, inverse sine of sine x should just be x. And so we should be able to calculate this by running over to Desmos and finding out what the inverse sine of 1 half is. Now, you need to be really careful here because uh, if your calculator is set for radians, your answer will come out in radians. And if your calculator is set for degrees, your answer will come out in degrees. Let's take a look at that. We're going to go ahead and put in inverse sine from the functions menu of 1 half. Now, right now, Desmos tells me that the inverse sine of 1 half is 0.523598. I'm going to go into the wrench menu here, and I can see that my calculator is currently set for radians. So this 0.5236 answer is the answer in radians. It is also the value pi over 6 because the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. And if you go ahead and do pi divided by 6 in Desmos, you'll see it's 0.5326. Now, if I wanted the answer in degrees, I could go over and change from radians to degrees and just watch on the screen. It will instantly change to 30 instead of that decimal value we had. So we could also say that this is or 30 degrees. So both of these answers on the line before we're in radians, or we could have it in degrees. Now, it's just super important that you remember whether your calculator is set for radians or degrees, or always check it because you just don't know otherwise. Now, we only got one answer here, pi over six radians. And up at the top, we can see that there are multiple answers. So the problem is that we're only getting the answer where the domain was restricted. And where the domain was originally restricted for sine was between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Remember that? And so there's only one place within that domain that we have an answer, and that's at pi over 6. So if you need to give all the answers, you're going to have to reason out where the other answers are and then write them in a general form. 
if we look only between 0 and pi over 2 for our graphs of sine, cosine, and tangent, then the inverses only have positive values. So let's just take a look at that. If we look at y equals cosine x between 0 and pi over 2, the inverse, sketch that in here, has only positive values. And if I look at 0 to pi over 2 for sine here, the inverse has only positive values right here. Same thing for tangent. If I look at the value of tangent between 0 and pi over 2, the inverse only has positive answers. All right, so uh, as long as we're in the first quadrant, we should have nice positive answers, which should help us solve any right triangle problem we come up with.